What's going on? Thanks for checking in. Today I have 10 of the best mobility exercises that you should be doing to increase your throwing velocity. Make sure you stay tuned. Check this one out. Hey, coming in at number one, you may have seen our guys do this if you've been following me for a little while now. This is a big staple in all my programs. I love doing this on upper body days, and you can even do this before you go ahead and throw. All it is, simple pull-up bar, dead hang. Go ahead, up here, Juice. You're gonna hold it, and I cue my guys to go deep breath. So in through the nose, out through the mouth. It's gonna lengthen through the lats, through the obliques, and it's actually gonna start to traction out the lower back. You're gonna breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth, 10 deep breaths. Simple as that. Hey, coming in at number two is a 90-90 hip lift. Super common, right? We throw it in on all our lower body training sessions. One of the best things you could possibly do for that ball and socket. So, Juice is gonna get into it. The goal of this is to try to keep that chest nice and stacked. But if you can't do this, you don't have that range of motion, you can go ahead and put the hands behind you. Go ahead and hit it. Nice. And then, once you progress into a neutral spine, we can go ahead and hold a kettlebell up front to keep that center of mass over the um, hip there. So let's get a kettlebell. Good. Good. We all know how important loosening up that ball and socket is in terms of you know throwing velocity. So. We got to hit it. Hey, coming at number three, we're hitting the hip and the posterior chain here. I call these pigeon pumps. We're going to get, you know, a regular bench. I like to tick it up to two, maybe one tick. And how we're going to do this is a pigeon stretch, but we're going to actively rotate into it. So come up here with one leg juice. From here, uh, we can do a couple different things. He can just reach across and then keep it going actively. Good. We want this ballistically, just working through. Now into it. Good. If we want to hit a little lumbar, a little lower back, a little T-spine too, we can rotate and hug ourselves this direction. So rotate, hug yourself this direction. And if you're looking to progress this exercise a little bit further, Grab a buddy, grab a band, and you'll pull your partner down into the stretch and then let them go. Pull them down into it, let them go. One more. Good. The more you tick this bench up, the easier it's gonna be. The lower, the harder it's gonna ultimately be. Progress through those three. Coming in at number four is a partner oblique stretch. All know how important obliques are, you know, in terms of throwing. Injuries last year for the oblique went up, you know, we just did a research study on this. Yeah. Injuries total, how much went up? That was recently went up covered. a couple hundred. Um, after COVID and then when spring trainings got shortened, there was almost a couple hundred extra injuries across the entire year. Yeah, and a lot of those injuries were oblique. We saw a lot of oblique with throwers. Scherzer pulled an oblique, right? Yeah. So this is a very good oblique stretch that you should be adding into your routine. So how you're gonna do it is find a rack. We're gonna go inside foot over the outside foot, scooch in a little bit. Good. Now you're gonna try to reach up and grab the rack with the other hand. So you have both of it on, now you're in a side bend. Partner is gonna go ahead and loop a band around you and you're gonna pull down to the side. So it should feel it all, even through the lat, the oblique, everything. And you're gonna hold here for 10 deep breaths, just like we did on the pull-up bar dead hangs. Coming in at number five is a thoracic spine mobility drill, right? We all know how important that is, creating that separation, you know, on the mound or when you're throwing. So I call this a T-spine crescent moon. You're gonna grab yourself a foam roller, you're gonna throw a leg over on it, and you're gonna actively press this knee into this foam roller the entire time throughout this exercise. Bottom leg's gonna be straight, big toe to the shin, and all Juice here is gonna do is keep that thumb. He's gonna draw a moon the whole way around on the turf or on the ground, keeping that thumb connected the entire time. Make this exercise a little bit harder, right? Progress it a tick. We're gonna scooch this knee up, 
even farther. Good. Coming in at number six, we're focusing on the adductors or the groin here. This is an adductor slider. Okay, so you're gonna grab one of these. You can use a plate if you don't have one, or it's like a moving slider for carpet. You get these at Target, get these at Walmart, super cheap. All right, or like I said, just use a plate. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it on the heel there. You're gonna get into a quadruped position, right? All you're gonna do is lean and slide out laterally to the side, filling it in that opposite groin, coming back up. So you're gonna shift, come back through. Progress this exercise a little bit to hit more of the posterior chain and more of the hamstring, right? We're gonna go stay stacked so you can hold a bat. Now this toe is gonna go up and out and you're gonna slide into it my way. Still gonna hit the adductors here, but you're also gonna hit some of that hamstring. To me, coming back up. Coming in at number seven is this landmine hip shift. This is a lateral low lunge. Good, creating that range of motion side to side laterally. You're gonna hit the adductors here as well. Good. The goal here is to stay nice and low. So picture some guy's hand right here. You're not popping up, you're just shifting. Back and forth, back and forth. It's hard to find a high level thrower with tight hips. Coming in at number eight, again, focusing on the hip joint, hip castle itself. This is called a quadruped leg whip. So Juice is gonna sit down into a quadruped position, right? He's gonna be as strict as he can throughout this entire range of motion. He's gonna go back, he's gonna rotate this toe out to the side, trying not to collapse his pelvis, right? Just go to the end range where you're not collapsing your pelvis. Come out, you're gonna hold there for a second, come back, rotate back in. Good, out, good. Back in. Coming in at number nine is a thoracic spine drill on the wall. So you might need a partner for this or you just really have to lock in and try to control that range of motion here. So Juice, go ahead and kneel down, blade it on any wall. From here, you're gonna go crisscross across your chest like you're holding a bar for a front squat. The idea is to keep this leg straight so your partner would be pushing on this leg or put a knee against knee, right? So this knee doesn't wanna cave in towards, you know, out away from the wall. We're gonna go ahead, hit this elbow on the wall. And we're gonna make a big moon with it. And now he's gonna tilt down to the back. Now he's gonna dig that same elbow closest to the wall up and around. And he's gonna come down now as far as he can. So partner's just sitting here trying to keep that knee from uh, backing out away from the wall. So go down, keep that elbow on the wall, up and around. Good, each direction, hit one more juice. Nice. Good. Nice. Go ahead and hit a set of 10 of those each side as well. Coming in at number 10 is more generalized. These are called CARS. So you have hip CARS, neck CARS, shoulder CARS. CARS stands for controlled articular rotation. Simply meaning, you know, in layman's turn, we're just trying to find that end range of the joint and work through it in a controlled motion. That's all we're trying to do. So I'm gonna show you three types of CARS that you need to be doing. Number one is just a simple shoulder car. So how we do shoulder cars, right, is I like to pinch a ball, a plyo ball in the other hand, and you're gonna shrug down with both arms first. All right, so you're gonna pull those traps down. Now we're gonna move that opposite shoulder from the ball, we're gonna go thumb up, slow, find that end range. Now you're gonna flip it, come the whole way down, slow, slow, slow trying to keep this rib cage down as well. 
you're just turning off everything but this shoulder capsule. Now you're gonna come back up and around. Through. And flip it again. Good. You're gonna go ahead and hit set to 10 here as well on the card. If you're doing them right, you should be fired up, you know, after three, after four of them. But work through it. Find that end range, get it done, all right? Good. Now we're gonna go ahead and do a hip car. How we're gonna do this is we're gonna grab a rack and you're gonna preset that opposite closest leg as tight to the rack as you can and you're gonna hold yourself nice and close to it so that hip is completely turned off. From here, even more. I would slide it close, close, close. Hug yourself, get your entire body on that rack. Now, I like using a plyo ball, a tennis ball, you can even use a baseball. We're gonna put it behind the knee here and pin it. We don't wanna move the knee at all. This is a hip only, hip dominant exercise here for this hip car. Juice is gonna uh, dorsiflex the foot here. Now he's just gonna do the same thing we did overhead with the shoulder car, same complex. Think of a hurdle here, you're getting up and over the hurdle. Nice and slow. Try not to rotate that pelvis. Try to just think of it as the hip and then go back that same direction. Come back up that same direction. Good. Now back. Good. As you can see, Juice needs a little bit of work on those cars, but not bad. Next one, what is first line of defense when your brain tells your body to start moving? The neck. We gotta hit the neck cars now. So you're gonna shrug down, get that ball out of your hand. Shrug down. Now, simply neck controlled articular rotations. Go half moons, back the other way. Keeping those shoulders shrugged nice and down. Working through it slowly. All right, good, and that's 10. Hey, that's a wrap, thanks for checking in. If you notice with all those 10 mobility drills, we were focusing on the hips, the thoracic spine, shoulders, right? All those ball and socket joints, we need to get loose, we need to get limber, that's gonna directly correlate to a greater throwing velocity. So hey, if you're looking to throw harder, pitcher, right? Trying to throw harder from the outfield, the infield positions, make sure you're adding all of those mobility drills into your program. Also, if you want to use the same training methodologies that I use in-house, I got a number of programs available for you in the description below. Make sure you check those out. And always remember that I pump out two of these videos per week. Do me a favor and subscribe for me. Appreciate you. Catch you next week. Game rewards the grind. It knows how much you've invested.